Good evening. My name is Kadria Ahmed, and this is Straight Talk. My guest has spent the bulk of his working life as a trade unionist concerned with improving the lot of workers, first in Nigeria, then across the continent. Between 1999 and 2007, he was the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress. In 2001, he was also elected the African representative at the International Labour Organization. In his present job, however, he has been accused of abandoning his working class constituency and siding with the ruling class to which he now belongs. A member of the soon to be the national ruling party, the All Progressives Congress, my guest is serving his second term as the governor of Edo State. On Straight Talk today, I'm very pleased to have with me Comrade Adams Oshomole. Sir, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your party, the APC will soon become Nigeria's ruling party. This is coming at a time of dwindling oil revenues, crashing value of the Naira, and um, all of this, of course, with all the promises you made to Nigerians in the run-up to elections. How do you plan to deliver, given the situation that the country is facing economically? Great, thank you very much. First, a little correction. Nigeria needs to know that we want to be addressed as a governing party because um, we are in a democracy. The people are not subjects. They are citizens. And those in government will be steward. And our president will be the steward in chief. Now, like you said, uh, uh, President Buhari will be assuming office at a time of dwindling oil revenue multi-debt profile, serious economic crisis, massive industrial closures, unprecedented levels of unemployment, security challenges, both in terms of insurgency, armed robbery, and other forms of, of criminality. You can talk about uh, youth restiveness. There are community uh, clashes. There are issues of headsmen and some farmers in various parts of the country. And above all, there's multi expectation. Multi expectations partly stoked by you because you did promise Nigerians that you will do better. Yeah, I, I, that was natural. There was no point asking for the opportunity to, to govern if you are not clear that you can do better than the former uh, government. Uh, we are clear that we can do better, and uh, we will do better. Uh, now the issue is what are you going to do differently? The starting point is that Nigeria must regain uh, our individual and collective self-confidence as the leading continent, sorry, the leading country in the Africa continent. Uh, we'll have a president who will talk and people listen because he will command respect he will talk from experience, and he will talk with a certain level of self-confidence, which a leader needs. The second is that because he was popularly elected across the country, he will not be bogged down by crisis of legitimacy. He is going to proceed and provide leadership as a man who has been elected by his people uh, at a moment when most people, or rather many, many people, have given up. And um, you can see the reactions already uh, across the country. The business community have already reposed confidence in the new president. By the Nonetheless, way, there, are some, the real, there yeah. are some real problems that the country is facing that um, cannot be dealt with on the basis of image or the respect that he commands. For example, our coordinating minister of the economy was on record a few weeks ago are saying that Nigeria every month is borrowing substantially to pay salaries. We have governors, including some APC governors, that are now struggling to pay salaries. And so my question again is this. 
all the promises you made to the electorate in the lead up to elections. Are you going to be able to deliver these promises given the situation the country is in? Yeah, well, th th this is true. I, I think what the, uh, I'm glad that the, the, the outgoing uh, Minister of Finance acknowledged the fact that the economy and the country finances has deteriorated to a level that even the federal government is living beyond its means. It has to borrow even to meet its most basic contractual obligation to employees. But you, you will agree, now, I have said to my colleagues you in the will areas. agree, given the sheer numbers that government employs and the fact that we already have very high unemployment rates, that to then have workers who've been working and not get paid is actually a recipe for chaos. And it if is. it is, then, then really we must find a solution. What is it? The solution is just good governance. I, I believe it is criminal. It is criminal not to pay a worker at the end of the month. I am a state, gov a state governor. And I do, I, I do, we do have our own share of, uh, I mean, we are all affected one way or the other. But in a do state, we are up to date with payment of salaries. My question is this, what recourse do workers have, whether they are state workers or federal workers or working for agencies, if the people that they work for are not paying them? Because you think it's serious enough to be dubbed a criminality. Well, I am not talking here strictly as a lawyer. And you don't take my words in strictly legal terms. You see, no, but uh, I'm, saying I, so I'm using these words socially, mm. that when you employ someone out of your own volition, because there is no worker that I know of who has imposed himself. People were invited to apply for jobs, and they were taken. And so they didn't impose themselves. And they live strictly on their wages. Now, not to pay them is to throw the entire family into a crisis. And how did they seek to cope in the face of non-payment of wages can lead to all kinds of uh, coping strategies that could undermine and even weaken national security with all kinds of other social uh, uh, vices. If you've got people in positions of authority who are not, you know, um, abiding by this social contract, what does the ordinary regular person do? Well, if you ask me, I have said this before. When I addressed the president of the NLC three weeks ago, I said to them that they must not allow any employer, federal, state, or local government, particularly the ones whose tenure is coming to an end, to leave office without paying and meeting their salary obligations. Because it is the responsibility of the NLC and their athletes to mount pressure in a way as to make it impossible for a governor to have peace if he has not paid salaries to his workers. You see, you can escape with what you think you can escape with. Because when I look at governors who receive awards and spend lavishly, you know, uh, to receive those awards, and I see all kinds of ceremonies that are not statutory obligation that still go on in many of these states where salaries are not paid. I cannot but reach the conclusion that it's about what you choose to do, what you think you can't avoid doing. Now, if you fail to pay salary one month and the people keep working, you didn't pay two months and they have not slapped you, you three months you didn't pay and they are no rioting, you might as well go to the fourth month. But I think my attitude is, even the Bible says that the laborer is a title to his wages. These issues have to be resolved before they become so complicated. Because I think that a new governor coming in who has gone to town, and when we talk of new government now, don't just look at the federal level. There are also state governors, state government, uh, 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 people who have uh, you know, uh, uh, contested for election uh, for the office of governors who have also made commitments by way of promises. And you don't want to come to office and find that you have inherited two, three, four, five months on pay salaries. And worse is that there is no reserve somewhere from where you can dip money to pay those salaries. That will not be fair. 
And the time to resolve those issues is now. The real issue that this president has to address is to you know, ask the, 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 the questions that the outgoing government has shied away from. How can we explain that oil price hovered around 108 to 110 dollars a barrel for four, five, for four consecutive years, and the official national budget, which is no secret, picked from about 55 dollars to 78 dollars, leaving a huge margin between 78 dollars and 108 dollars a barrel which ought to have accrued by way of national saving from which you can draw in moment of crisis. How do we explain first that that so-called oil crude oil uh, reserve is not there and that things have got it so bad that we are borrowing now to pay salaries? Number two, that... No, no, before you go to number two, let's discuss number one a little bit more. The answer, whatever it is though, does not help you deal with the immediate today problem, or does it? it will, do you see a way in which the answer will, can the, help? Yeah. Okay. The next president has to do what the present president failed to do. Which is? Block all the leakages in the system. If all the money that accrues, even at $60 a barrel, gets to the Federation account, uh, a substantial part is not stolen or misapplied, the current situation will change immediately. Okay, so that's one. Now, that two. is why. The second is that you do not need to spend the kind of resources that we are currently spending. In government? In government. Okay. I'm okay. sure that General Buhari's presidency we not need more than 50 to 60 percent of what the Agoi president spends, and so you can cut substantially the cost, of, the cost of running the presidency by as much as 50 to 60 percent. The, your question to me is, what can we do immediately? We can stop the bleeding. Immediately. The bleeding can be stopped immediately. Number three, there are all kinds of aids which no government needs. You know, what the media refer to a job for the boys. Uh, I'm sure General Buhari has already said, I'm going to run a lead government. A lean government also means a substantial reduction in your recurrent expenditure. I, I think there's a lot of excess fat up there that you can do without and become even more fit as a result of shedding that excess fat. Okay. You know, and there is too much excess fat everywhere. And I believe once the president lead by example, as he's determined to do, then the National Assembly will have no choice but to go with the logic of change, which is that they too must share substantially what we do. Let us take a quick break. Don't go away. Fresh.